Oh, uh, hey, Goulash here, and welcome to another episode of... The Gulag. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about my favorite Easter eggs. Now, Easter eggs aren't just a thing that the Easter Bunny leaves under the Easter tree during May or April or whatever the fuck Easter takes place. No, Easter eggs can also be hidden messages, images, or jokes that a creator puts into their work just for the fans. And here are my favorite ones in horror films. Let's get started. Number five. The Secret of Esriver from Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Now, Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2 is a contentious sequel. It wasn't really the Blair Witch sequel that anybody necessarily wanted. It was much more of a conventional horror film with some found footage elements, but largely it was a normal horror film, and that didn't go well with critics or fans. But it's a guilty pleasure for some, including Dr. Wolfula, probably because it's basically a live-action episode of Scooby-Doo if you think about it. When Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2 was released on DVD, Artisan decided, well, let's include a little marketing gimmick with the DVD so we can hopefully increase sales from this debacle. What was this marketing gimmick? Well, it was the Secret of Esriver. Essentially, on the Book of Shadows DVD, they digitally inserted all of these Easter eggs that were usually scary images or little puzzles or whatever. They'd be like a bunch of locks in the background suddenly being arranged in a pentagram shape or an image in the background becoming sinister and you could have even used all of these puzzles and easter eggs to solve a puzzle online and if you solve the puzzle you could see a bonus scene from the film even when they were making their dvds the Blair Witch guys were definitely innovating as far as marketing is concerned. You gotta, you gotta admit that. You know, who doesn't want to see locks in the background arranged in a pentagram shape? That's kind of cool. That's kind of metal. Number four. Eugene from Behind the Mask. Now, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon is filled with Easter eggs from popular horror films because Leslie Vernon exists in a world where Jason, Freddy, Michael Myers, even Chucky, all exist. It's the closest thing probably to a horror cinematic universe that we're probably ever gonna get. But besides all that, there was one character of particular significance, Eugene. Eugene is sort of the master to Leslie's Padawan learner. Now, Eugene is a retired slasher villain, but unlike Jason or Freddy, he came before them and isn't really as well known or popular. Most of the guys in your line of work today are uh, hacks. I'm not talking about the guys that really worked hard, like Jay, Fred, Mike. There weren't nobody like them in the early years. We just hit hard, wiped everybody out, and disappeared as soon as we could without ever giving a thought to coming back. Now, this has been long theorized, but only recently confirmed that Eugene is intended to be the alias of Billy from Black Christmas, one of the pre-slasher horror movies. Billy was deranged and never seen in the film Black Christmas. Now, the only tip-off that Eugene would be Billy, though, is that, you know, he mentions that he tax sororities, which could be any slasher villain in films, but according to the writer behind the mask he's supposed to be belly so that's good enough for me and it makes for a neat little easter egg number three W.E. Slaughter from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, opens up much like the previous films with an opening crawl. You know, kind of a Star Wars-y thing. But this crawl mentions a certain character that you might not know from any of the other films. A single member of the murderous family lived to see trial. The prosecution recorded his name as W.E. Sawyer. He died in the gas chamber in 1981. If you look in the background of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you'll notice that the cook's barbecue is called We Slaughter Barbecue. It's kind of iffy what the last name of Leatherface's family is. Sometimes it's Hoyt in the remake series. Sometimes it's Sawyer in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and even in the current continuity, but sometimes it's Slaughter, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation. Since Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is not canon to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, it could be said W.E. Slaughter is the cook. 
It's just one of his aliases or whatever. It's not totally clear if it's an Easter egg or not, but I like to think it is. Maybe he took the fall for all of Leatherface's crimes. That's why we only see Grandpa and Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Number two, the Halloween Easter eggs. Now, the Halloween series is filled with little fun nods to past horror films, especially Psycho. This isn't an Easter egg, but of course, Jamie Lee Curtis is Janet Lee's daughter. And Dr. Samuel Loomis is named after Sam Loomis from Psycho, but probably the crowning achievement, the thing that really all the nods to Psycho were really building up to, was Janet Lee's cameo appearance in Halloween H2O, but not only that, she appeared with the car that she drove in Psycho, with her Psycho theme even in the background. They're not gonna get much better than that when it comes to Psycho nods, especially since pretty sure everybody from Psycho is dead. And number one, Wes Craven and Sam Raimi's Easter eggs. These are pretty well-known Easter eggs, but they're among my favorite because of how elaborate they are. You see, it all started with the Evil Dead. Sam Raimi put in the background of one of his sets a Hills Have Eyes poster. Kind of a fun little nod to the fact that the Hills Have Eyes had a Jaws poster. But after that, Wes Craven included a clip from the Evil Dead in his film, A Nightmare on Elm Street. And after that, well, guess what? Freddy's claw hand appeared in the background of a set on Evil Dead 2. You'd think that'd be the end, and it kinda was. How many Evil Dead? Yeah. How many Hellraiser? But another thing happened. That's kind of unrelated, but I want to mention it anyway. Jason Goes to Hell had a pretty obvious Easter egg of the Necronomicon appearing. I think they borrowed it from the set of Army of Darkness, which was filming at the time. Nice little fun thing, and it led into the big old Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comic that came out in the late 2000s. Damn little shits. What'd you call me? Huh? Not your friend. Those were my favorite Easter eggs in horror. Let me know in the comments what yours are. Now, to wrap things up, I'm going to be answering a question from one of you guys at home. Jack O'Clock asked, Goulash, my question is, are you happy with no remember anything about you life? Jack O'Clock must be Jamaican or something. I don't necessarily remember much about my life, but I definitely remember my high school years. I think Dr. Wolfula did that intentionally, so I think I'd be happier if I didn't remember that stuff. Definitely. Uh. Well, anyway, enough of my woes. If you liked the video, like it. Or dislike it if you disliked it. Be honest, I guess. Subscribe if you enjoy the videos. And follow Dr. Wolfula's social media accounts. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Dash Dr. Wolfula. I've been Goulash. You fucking weirdos.